ESPN breaks up with Trump all over the world. Separate stories, headlines. ESPN. They rented my golf course in Los Angeles for a day. 120 or 200 golfers or something. They rent. So I kept their deposit, which is very nice of them. And now I have other people using it, so I get two for the price of one. No, but the point is, the press is so dishonest. People here, NASCAR, ESPN break. Now, here's the good news. I'm very rich. <laughs> there is no business like sports business when it comes down to attracting every single eyeball and putting every single duffel bag in every seat. Sports leagues, franchises, even individual athletes will often go to incredible lengths to avoid offending anyone and appeal to everyone. That, my friend, is where the money is. Not often does the sport world find itself rocked by one comment from one individual. Then again, Donald Trump is no ordinary individual. Welcome back to the man who invented the concept of digging deep into sports business. Outdoors today, look out, the sports professor, Rick Haro. Good to see you again, professor. Uh, listen, I go where you want me to go. So about 10 miles down the road is the Meadowlands, MetLife Stadium. Used to be Giant Stadium. Remember the New Jersey Generals played there. And you remember Donald Trump. And remember the lawsuit. Remember the $3 settlement. And remember all the issues about the USFL. I know you want to talk about that. But how about going to the scene? Kudos to me, huh? Well, to you as well, because, I mean, certainly Donald was just about your age when he owned the New Jersey Generals. He was a mere 37 years of age. He got involved in football. But the thing about it is... Donald was a guy back then. You could see, Rick, he saw the USFL. It was only a couple of seasons old. He said, I don't want to be spring anymore. I want to go up against the NFL. It wasn't the smartest move at the time because of the NFL, but you could see the kind of aggressiveness that this guy has. Well, remember the history of it. There was a big lawsuit. The USFL beat the NFL. They had an issue on damages, trebled damages in an antitrust court. They were awarded $1. So all of the owners split three bucks. The bottom line was, though, that Donald Trump didn't come in early. He came in later and, as you said, shifted the league from the spring, competing to the against the NFL in the fall. Herschel Walker, remember, was there. Uh, Doug Flutie was there. A whole bunch of household names, but Donald Trump does shake them up. Do you get the feeling, I mean, of course, ESPN has walked away for the time being, and so has the PGA and NASCAR as well. But don't you get the feeling, Rick, that still it's all about money? I mean, look, the, the sports leagues want to make everybody happy. But if one year, two years, three years down the road, things happen, they'll still do business with Donald Trump. I can't see this being a permanent thing. Well, but there's a long history with NASCAR. I know he uh, you know, consulted on trying to find a site in New York for a track. I was involved in those early stages. Now there is a ballroom that NASCAR rents uh, at the uh, uh, Marriott Resort before the Homestead event. So it's not a large, earth-shaking partnership, but it is symbolic. And so does Donald Trump offer something in the future to have the leagues come back knowing that there's controversy no matter what? Well, this is, again, not a programming partnership. This is a renting of... of Ballrooms. I think we lost your audio there for a second. You still there? Oh, we lost his audio. My goodness, the man is in Albany. See what happens? You go into Albany for a couple... No, no, wait, no offense to the people in Albany. I'll, I'll, I'll take a lot of heat for that, okay? Uh, but we lost Rick Haro in here, so we're going to go ahead and continue. The deal here, basically, and, and what Rick and I had been discussing, is that the National Football League, NASCAR, the rest... PGA, whatever they are, they all want to make sure that they still put people in the seats. They don't want to get anybody upset. But here's something else to think about. What Donald Trump said is controversial at its core. There's no doubt. But when you look at what's happened to a lot of these sports, specifically, NASCAR has got a problem over the Confederate flag right now that they've been dealing with for some time. They've sort of let that go by the board simply because it's been good for business. NASCAR didn't really react until the Confederate flag became one of those issues that they had to get involved in right away because of social media, because of social mores. They could have taken care of that a long time ago. And let me tell you, from somebody who had been involved in NASCAR for a long time and known the people there, there was a lot of talk that they wanted to pull something like the Confederate flag out, but they simply did not want to do it because they didn't want to alienate the fans. It's the same thing with the PGA that's involved, the PGA Grand Slam. They pulled that exhibition out of one of the Trump courses, uh, I believe, in, uh, in California. It was in Los Angeles, Trump National Golf Club of Los Angeles. But look, it's all about the money one way or another. Donald Trump is right. He's got the money. He will continue on. I think it's very unlikely that you'll find a time when sports leagues, whatever they're doing, whether it's NASCAR, PGA, NBC, all the rest, I don't think they're going to stay away from Donald Trump because they'll go back 
They'll do business if it means money. They will let this die down. They feel like they had to do it right now simply in order to make sure that they didn't get any backlash. Trump is still starting conversation. He's going to force them to converse. He's going to force their fans to converse. And in the end, let's be honest, sports, it's just like anything else. It is all about the money. And Donald Trump is not afraid. All right, now are you afraid? Let's go ahead and point that to you right now. Because a lot of Americans right now are wondering right now about what Donald Trump is saying and if he's saying the things that speak to you. So if Donald Trump continues to gain in the polls, would you vote for him? Would you then take a chance? Do you think, quite frankly, that Donald Trump is the guy that you would want as president? Don't forget, Newsmax.com, the mothership, Saturday, July the 11th, Donald Trump's appearance at Freedom Fest. We will carry it. Go to Newsmax.com, find out the times, and be there. That'll be on Saturday, July the 11th. Stay tuned. Coming right up, the image that makes the man.